best and worst job. So I think I'll, I'll begin with this, with my, I'd say best job. And, and when okay. I say best job, the, the job I enjoyed doing the most. And I mean, the reason I say this is it was a, um, it was a book that I wrote almost um, without intending to. Uh, I originally thought I would do just illustrate something and I had an idea for a, a story and then I thought, well, actually, I, I could, because it's very simple in terms of its, its word count, if it was a middle grade, um, I'd been doing picture books predominantly and um, I, I suddenly thought, well, actually, I want to tell a slightly longer story. I've got this idea for um, a, a girl who lives in, um, in a sort of generic big city. And I actually called it Big City. And uh, with this character, and originally, these were two, two drawings that I did um, in, uh, in a sketchbook. And I was just sort of designing the characters. And then I wanted, after I'd drawn them, I wanted to sort of tell their story. I wanted to know who they were. And so I started imagining who these two characters were. It was a sort of um, a little girl, a little sort of bow in her hair. And she was with a, uh, a character that was just all hair, a sort of curtain of hair, a little bit like, you know, Cousin It or um, I, was, I was thinking of the, um, uh, there was a cartoon called Wacky Races and there were two cavemen and they were just, you know, sort of curtains of hair. I also remember you, Katie, sort of mm. brushing your hair over your face sometimes and sort of coming in and you, you were just this curtain of hair so I think the there's shower. yeah that's right and those, those were the things I was thinking of and so I wrote this story and I wrote it almost as um, a series of of pictures I had a little notebook a ring bound notebook I'm just going to indicate the ring binding there and I sort of told the story in tiny little thumbnails I decided that each chapter they were very short chapters would would sort of have five spreads in them and i just sort of drew out this story and then once i've done all the little pictures i started to just write in tiny writing i would sort of indicate you know where the text might go and so i would draw a little scene like like that and there would be a you know little girl and her best friend standing there and on the other page there'd be lots of little objects and things there and some text would go there and some more text there and after I'd done that I would just write that amount of text for each each on each page and that's mm. how I wrote the first draft of what uh, turned into my um, first Otteline book which was Otteline and the Yellow Cat and um that's your favourite job to this it, day? It was my favourite mm. job because in a way it was a job I sort of invented. No one asked me to do it yeah. and I sort of developed that. Um, and I suddenly realised that instead of working in the picture book format, which I had done up until that point, there was this whole other world I could explore that was more, um, which was a chapter book world um, where um, I could tell stories that were just a little bit longer and more complex, but still had that picture book sensibility to mm. them. What was your best job? Well, I'd say some, some of my best jobs really have been kind of self, self-initiated yeah. stuff as the kind of artwork that I've been doing on Big Cartel um, and stuff like that includes like the cats in the buildings. Oh, I love those, yeah. Um, so they're just almost like posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of like self-generated stuff. So it's the thing that I find with Big Cartel is that I can plan exactly what I feel like drawing and whatever comes to, you know, whatever comes to mind, really. I get to, to draw and paint and I can, like, explore that a lot more um, as opposed to, you know, being briefed something mm. and, you know, I kind of have... I kind of have like free. You stopped then when I drew the window sill. <laughs> you were going, "What is he doing? Interfering Excuse in, me. in in my best job?" Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm not really doing it any certain justice here. This is a bit, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just kind of 
you know, doing my own artwork and so, so instead of things, I think yeah, this is really doing... good instead of just waiting for the phone to ring or the email to come mm. through saying Katie we would like you to illustrate this story yeah you just sat down and thought right I'll make a series of posters yeah well yeah just a series of artwork yeah um yeah. and some of that was also what I also really like doing was um you know, like building almost kind of what we've been doing together in some of our previous studio chats, but like building a kind of Imaginary landscape. landscape. Yeah. 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 And the appeal of that to me is I get to pencil it all out and then I go over it in a, a dip pen and ink mm. and I put in detail and it's like really therapeutic and you're just kind of Yeah, you lose yourself scratching in, away. In, in the detail. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's what I'm doing at the moment as well. Um a series of artwork like that yeah. and just yeah. kind of building up and then putting colour on top and it's just all you know it's all to do with like just what I want to draw and what how I feel and exploring, I think that's one of my um, techniques stuff. as well yeah you know, which, which is nice so exploring mm. dip pen and watercolour and how that works together as well as resolving I suppose how an image works as a single image yeah yeah with with Ottoline it was about a progression of it, it was narrative storytelling, a progression mm. of images going through, so the story unfolds. But a lot of what I had to think about was the environment. Where did Ottilie live? Um, and so I decided she would live in apartment 243 at the top of, of a building called the Pepper Pot Building because it looked like a pepper pot. And that's actually based on a, a building in Brighton near Queen's Park that was actually called the Pepper Pot Building. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, and it looked like a Pepper Pot. So I thought every other um, building will look like something. So I had the sort of clown's hat building that was next to um, the Pepper Pot Building. And um, then there was a sort of, uh, there was a shoebox building and, you know, lot, 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 lots of different buildings on the same street. Mm -hmm. And that made me think about the sort of environment that Ottoline and Miss Munro lived in. Mm. And again, that was a sort of, you know, taking a, taking characters for a walk and deciding, you know, who they were and what they did. And I love that sort of freedom mm. to, to create one's own world. And in a way, well, that's what you're doing yeah. with these illustrations. Yeah. Each is a little, a little world that you're, uh, you're illustrating. Yeah, I think that's what's so enjoyable about it. It's like the freedom that it gives you to just do whatever you want and mm. create things. Yeah. Well, I think I think that for all of us as as freelancers is is the key it is not to wait for people to ask mm. uh, or commission in that sense, but just to make your own work because yeah. that is a definition of what freelancers do. I think they make their own work. Um, you know, always it's always good to be open to. Um, job offers mm. be, be available for that and we're, but we're talking about well, best jobs aren't we yeah well and I also I think... think when you're maybe some of the stuff that you do you know on your own and it's like self-initiated it can inform the stuff that you're commissioned to do you know if you're kind of experimenting mm. with the things that you like and trying out new techniques and you might find something that really works for you that you can then bring into another you know another job yes Yes. The other thing I did um, with this, again, made, makes it, I suppose, my best job in a way, because I was making it up as I went along, mm. um, was the, I, I came up with the titles on the same sketchbook page that I drew Ottoline and Mr Munro. And I just wrote down three titles, not because I was going to write them. I wasn't even thinking. I just thought, what would, what would they sound like? What would these stories sound like? And the first one was Ottoline and the Yellow Cat. And when I wrote that down, I just thought, right, OK, so Ossoline's got to meet a yellow cat in some form. And that immediately mm. sort of said, right, OK, that's a problem I need to solve in this story. And the second uh, title I wrote down, again, completely speculatively, was Ossoline goes to school. And again, that made me think, right, OK, I'm going to have to figure out what sort of school she goes mm. to. I'm going to work out who she is. And then I wonder what sort of school she goes to and what adventure she might have in this place. And the final one was Ottoline at Sea. And I sort of knew, in a way, that 
that would be about Ottoline and, and where she lived and her domestic arrangement with some sort of mysterious element. The yellow cap had to be mysterious. This one would be about Ottoline maybe leaving her environment, going to an institution where she's not sure. And this one would be the travel. This would be Ottoline mm. sleep, where is she going, what's happening. So that gave me these, these just a very beginning thought about what it might be like if I did three stories. Mm. And it was only a couple of years later when I was at the publisher and they asked me, you know, did I have ideas for any stories? I said, well, I've created these two characters and I've got three titles. Oh, so you sat on it for quite a while. A long time. Yeah. 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 And then, and then they, and, and, you know, and then I remembered I'd had I'd done this single page which had this stuff on it. And I thought, right, I'll make a pact with myself that I won't change the titles. That's what the three books have got to be called. And so that gave me, in a sense, a, a way to do it. And the second breakthrough, I suppose, was using this um, this type of structure to write and illustrate the stories, where I began visually and then I added the words. And I'm often asked, you know, which do I prefer, writing or illustrating? And I always say I'm an illustrator who writes in order to give himself something to illustrate. Mm. And I think yeah. this is what we're talking about in terms of our best jobs, are yeah. the ones where we decide what we want to do. Yeah. And we give ourselves um, a context. Well, I'm help hoping my my best job is still to come when I do my own <laughs> when I do my own book. Yes, <laughs> hopefully I'll, that yeah. will be my uh, my best job. <laughs> and the final um, book in the Ottoline series, and I say final because I'm not sure I'm going to write any more Ottoline books. Um, I'm often asked whether I will, and I, mm. I'm not. I don't think I will actually. Um, is Ottoline and the Purple Fox, and I wrote that because. I wanted, in a sense, to have a sort of symmetry to to the series. So we begin with Ottilie and the Yellow Cat, and we end with Ottilie and the Purple Fox. Um, and again, that made me think, who is the Purple Fox? What's he doing? And he turns out to be um, a very um, sophisticated city-dwelling fox. Um, he actually is called an urbane fox. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so a little pun there. Um, that's all I need to, yeah. to set a, a whole story going. I like this cat. This cat is off searching for something. That, that could be a story in um, itself. Oh, well, what's your worst job? Okay, my worst job um, was that I'm going to actually sort of um, intrude slightly down here when I tell you about this. <laughs> this was a job that I took... Um, because it paid really, really well. And it paid really well because it was a textbook um, for teaching English. So what they wanted was lots and lots of illustration in, in it was a series of books and they basically wanted lots of illustration. It was an English language uh, textbook for Japanese students to learn English. And what they wanted was a little character that was going to go throughout the book and appear lots of times. And they wanted this character to be a <laughs> manga cockroach. Wow. Yeah. So I actually drew Cute. this manga cockroach hundreds and hundreds of times for this Japanese teaching textbook, along with other illustrations that had to involve lots of detail because it was all about teaching vocabulary and mm. constructs. But this was your teacher, the little cockroach was, uh, you know, considered terribly cute. I had nightmares about this manga. <laughs> um, but what happened was it did actually, because they paid per illustration, um, it actually was a really well-paying job. And um, actually on the back of that, it financed, I made enough money to be able to go and spend um, six months in New York. Oh, that doesn't seem like the worst job ever then. Well, you know, <laughs> even the worst jobs can lead to good outcomes. So sometimes you've got yeah. to just go, okay, this might not be creatively the most you know, rewarding thing in the world and, and you know, not like Ottoline and writing one's own book or designing. Yeah, maybe your, not as fulfilling. You know, not as fulfilling. But sometimes you can learn a lot by... And I know that you've done a couple of jobs where, you know, you've actually learned quite a lot, mm. actually just tackling things that you wouldn't necessarily yeah. have taken on. 
Yeah. Um, and and that I think. Yeah, it's all part of it, isn't it? I think you can always do jobs that are the best and and that feel good. I think there's always going to be. Yeah, Some and, and a little bit all... challenging or you know yeah. boring or whatever it is, but you kind of you do always learn something mm. from it. And I think I think this is about maybe the favourite and the less favourite, mm. and that, I think that's yeah. maybe less uh, less sort of uh, judgmental when we're, we're talking yeah. about this. Yeah. But I think that the overall lesson, in some ways, that we, one might take from this is that um, let's just add a little bit of blue onto that. Um, the Best thing, the blue cat. <laughs> Possibly the nemesis of the yellow cat. Um, what we can really take away from this, in a way, is that um, generating your own projects and your own work is a good way to go. Mm. But being open, I think, to learning from whatever context you find and being an illustrator as opposed to an artist, being an illustrator is all about creating your own context. Mm -hmm.